from the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco. It's the Cube covering AT and T Spark. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in San Francisco at uh, the historic Palace of Fine Arts. It's a beautiful spot, it's, it's redone. They moved the Exploratorium out a couple years ago. So now it's in a really nice event space. And we're here for the AT&T Spark event and the conversation's all around 5G. But we're excited to have our first guest and he's working on something that's a little bit tangential to 5G related, but not absolutely, um, connected, but really important work. It's Chris Sambar, he is the SVP of FirstNet at AT&T. Chris, well, great to see you. Thanks Jeff, great to be here, I appreciate it. Yeah, so you had a nice uh, keynote presentation talking about FirstNet, so for people I missed that aren't familiar, what is AT&T FirstNet? Sure, I'll give a quick background. Um, as I was mentioning up there, tomorrow is the 17 year anniversary of 9-11. So 17 years ago tomorrow, um, a big problem in New York City, lots of first responders descended on the area, all of them were trying to communicate with each other. They were trying to use their radios, which are you know, typically what you see a first responder using, the wireless networks in the area. Unfortunately, challenges, it wasn't working. Um, they were having trouble communicating with each other, their existing wireless networks um, were getting congested. And so the 9-11 Commission came out with a report years later and they said, we need a dedicated communications network just for first responders. And so they spun on this up and they said, we're going to dedicate some spectrum, 20 megahertz of uh, D-class spectrum, which is really prime spectrum, $7 billion, and we're going to set up this federal entity called the FirstNet Authority, and they're going to create a public safety network across America. So FirstNet Authority spent a few years figuring out how to do it, and they landed on what we have today, which was a uh, public-private partnership between AT&T and public safety throughout America, and we're building them a terrific network across the country. It is literally a separate network. So when I, I think of wireless in America, I think of four main commercial carriers, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint. This is the fifth carrier. This is public safety's wireless network just for them. So when you say an extra network, so it's a completely separate, obviously you're leveraging infrastructure like towers right, and right. power and those types of things, but it's a completely separate network than the existing four that you mentioned. Yeah, so if you walk into our data centers throughout the country, you're going to see separate hardware, physical infrastructure that is just for FirstNet. That's the core network just for this network. On the uh, on on the, uh, the, the, RAN, the the radio access network, we've got antennas that have band 14 on them. That's public safety's band, um, dedicated just for them when they need it. So yeah, it's, it's literally a physically separate network. The, the SIM card that goes into a FirstNet device is a different SIM card than our commercial users would use, because right. it's separate. So one of the really interesting things about 5G and kind of the evolution of, of wireless is, is, is taking some of the load that has been taken by like Wi-Fi and, you know, and other options for fast, on, always on connectivity. I would assume radio, and I don't know that much about you know radio frequencies that are, that have been around forever with communications in in first responders. Is the vision that the 5G will eventually take over that type of communication as well? Yeah, absolutely. So. If you look at the evolution of first responder and public safety communications, you know, for many years now they've used radios, um, relatively small, narrow spectrum bands for um, narrow band voice, right? just voice communications, really doesn't do data, maybe a little bit, but really not much. Now they're going to expand to this spectrum, the, the, the D-class, the D-block spectrum, excuse me, which is 700 megahertz, it's low band spectrum, that'll provide them with dedicated spectrum. And then the next step, as you say, is 5G, so take the low off as public safety kind of comes into the the new uh, the new public safety communication space that they've really been wanting for years and years. They'll start to utilize 5G as well on right. our network. So where are you on kind of the development of FirstNet? Where are you in kind of the rollout? What's kind of the sequence of events? So the first thing we did, the award was last year in March 2017. The first thing we did was we built out the core network. When I talked about all that physical infrastructure, that basically took a year to build out. It was pretty extensive and about a half a billion dollars. So that was the first thing we we did that completed earlier this and was year. Was that nationwide or major metro cities? Or nationwide, how did, everywhere nationwide, in the country, okay. yeah. And so now what we're doing is we are putting the spectrum that we were given, um, or I should say we released for 25 years, we're putting that spectrum up across our towers all, all over the country. So that will take five years, it's a five year build out, tens of thousands of towers across America will get this public safety spectrum for public safety and for their use. Right, and will you target by, by geo, by metro area? I mean, mm -hmm. how's it going to actually actually happen, how, you know, that's a huge global rollout, sure. five years is a long time. How you kind of prioritize, how are you kind of really going to market with so this? So the band 14 spectrum is being rolled out
out in the major um, the major dense areas across the country. I will tell you that by the end of the rollout, five years from now, 99% of the population of America will have band 14 spectrum, so the vast majority of the population. Other areas where we don't roll it out, rural areas, for example, all of the features that public safety wants, the we call them preemption and priority, which is the features that allow them to always have access to the network whenever they need it, th th those features will be on our regular commercial spectrum. So if band 14 isn't there, the network will function exactly as if it were there for them. Right, and then how do you roll it out to the agencies? And, you know, all the first responders, the fire, the, mm -hmm. the police, the, the EMTs, et cetera. How do they start to take advantage of this opportunity? Sure, so we started that earlier this year we really started in the March April time frame in earnest signing up agencies and the uptake's been phenomenal it's uh, over 2,500 public safety agencies across America over 150,000 and that number grows by thousands every week you know that's actually a pretty old number but um, they are signing up in droves in fact one of the problems we were having initially is handling the volume of first responders that wanted to sign up and the reason is they're seeing that um, whether it's a fire out in Oregon um, and they need connectivity in the middle of nowhere in a forest where there's no wireless connectivity at all, we'll bring a vehicle out there, put up an antenna and provide them connectivity. Whether it's a 4th of July show or a parade or an active shooter, wherever large groups of people um, combine together and the network gets congested, they're seeing that, wow, my device works no matter what. I can always send a text message. I can send a video. It just works. Right, right. It didn't work before. So they right. love it and they're really they're really signing up in droves. It's, it's really interesting because it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that this was triggered as, as part of the post 9-11 you know, activity to make things better, make things mm -hmm. safer. But there's a lot of buzz, especially out here in the West, with with first responders in the news for running out of bandwidth. Yeah. As you said, the firefighters, the fire's been burning yeah. out here, it seems like forever. Um, and really nobody thinking about it. Those are obviously, they're probably roaming on their traditional data plan. And yeah. they're probably out there for weeks and weeks at a time that wasn't part of their allocation when they figured yeah. out what plan they should be. So the timing is pretty significant. Um, and there's clearly a big demand for this. Absolutely. So, so that example that you cite is a really good one. So two weeks ago, there's a lot in the news about a fire agency in the West that um, said they were throttled by a, their carrier. Well, um, it was a commercial carrier, and commercial carriers have terms and conditions that sometimes they need to throttle usage if you get to a certain level. That's how commercial networks work. Right, right. Um, FirstNet was built with not only different technology, hardware, software, but with different terms and conditions, because we understand that um, when a first responder responds to your house, we don't want that to be the minute in time when their network, uh, their, their plan got maxed out and right. now they're getting throttled. Right. So we don't have any throttling on the first net network. So it's not only the hardware, software, technical aspects of the network, but the terms and conditions are different. It's what you would expect that a, a first responder would have and want on their device. And that's right. what we're providing for them. Right, and the other cool thing that, that you mentioned is, you know, we see it all the time, we go to a lot of conferences, a lot of people probably experience it at, at uh, big events, right? Is that it's still today, you know, Wi-Fi and, and traditional LTE has hard times in super dense environments yeah. where there's just tons and tons and tons of bodies, I imagine, uh, absorbing all that yeah. signal yeah. as much as anything else. So to have a separate spectrum in those type of environments, which are usually chaotic when you got first responders or some of these mass events that you outlined, is a pretty important feature to not get just completely wiped out by every Everybody else happening to be there yeah, at the same time. Exactly. I'll give you two quick examples that illustrate what you just said. The first one is on the 4th of July in downtown Washington, D.C. You can imagine that show. It's an awesome show, but there are hundreds of thousands of people that gather around that the Washington Monument to watch the show. And the expectation is at the peak of the show, when all those people are there, you're not really going to be sending text messages or calling people. The network's probably just not going to work very well. That's We've all gotten used to that. Right, right. This year, I had first responders who were there during the event sending me videos of the fireworks going off, something that never would have been possible before. And them saying, oh my gosh, this actually works the way it's supposed to work. We can use our phones. And then the second example, which is a really sad example. There was a recent school shooting down in Florida. You had um, sheriffs, local police, ambulances. You even had some federal authorities that showed up. They couldn't communicate with each other because they were on different radio networks. And um, imagine if they had that capability of FirstNet where they could communicate with each other and the network worked, even though there were thousands of people that were gathering around that scene to see what was going on. Right. So that's the capability we're bringing to public safety, and it's really good for all of us. And, and do you see that this is kind of the, the aggregator of the multi-disparate systems yes. that exist now, as you mentioned in, in your 
keynote, and, and again, there's different agencies, they've got different frequencies, they've got police, fire, ambulance, and federal agencies, mm -hmm. that now potentially this, as just kind of a unified uh, first responder network, becomes the de facto way that I can get in touch with re anyone regardless of, of yeah. where they come from or who they're associated that with. That is exactly the vision of FirstNet. Yeah. You know, you, in major cities across America, police, fire, emergency medical, typically are on three different radio networks, and it's very difficult for them to communicate with each other. They may have a shared frequency or two between them, but it's very challenging for them. Our goal is to sign all of them up, put them on one LTE network, the FirstNet network, customized for them, so they can all communicate with each other, regardless of how much congestion is on the network. So right. that's the vision of FirstNet. And then that's even before you get into the 5G impacts, yeah. which will be the data impacts, whereas I think, again, you showed in some of your examples, the, the enhanced amount of data that they can bring to bear mm -hmm. on solving a problem, whether it's a, a layout of a building for the fire department or drone footage from up above. We talked to Menlo Park yeah. Fire. They, they're using drones more and more to give eyes over the fire to the guys down on the ground. So there's a lot of really interesting applications that you can get more better data to drive more better applications through that network yeah, to help these guys do the job. Yeah, you've got smart cities cameras. Don't you want that to be able to stream over the network and give it to first responders so they know what they're going to encounter when they show up to the scene of, of whatever issues going on in the city? Of course you do. Yeah. And you need a really reliable, stable network to provide that on. Well, Chris is uh, not only an interesting work, but very noble and uh, an Thank important you. work. So appreciate all the efforts that you're putting in, and uh, thanks for stopping thanks. by. I appreciate it, Jeff. It's been great talking with you. All right, he's Chris. Yeah. I'm Jeff. You're watching The Cube. We're in San Francisco at the Palace of Finance. Arts at AT&T Spark. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.